10 weeks, so we have about eight to nine hundred dollars floating around. Now, what I want you uh, now is to listen to Catherine. She's going to introduce you to a series of non-profit and charity organizations in Singapore. After which you listen to, I want you to reinvest your money, if you want to, into this organization. So do some good deed tonight. Okay? That's what we're going to do. Okay, Catherine? Thank you, thank you, Johnny. Okay, hi. Uh, I'm Catherine, Catherine Chong. I'm actually the founder of Homespun. And Homespun is actually a uh, handicraft. Uh, it is an SE. I just told Jay, I don't like the word SE, which is social enterprise. Um, well, the reason being that the, the uh, mission for Homespun is to work with the cottage industry. But today, what we're going to talk about, like what Johnny mentioned earlier, is to understand what is charity organization? Right here what we have is um, who, what, and how. Who are the people in charity organizations? Um, what do they do? And how can we contribute? Right. Okay, um, for charity organizations, there are two categories. Um, you have non-profit. What you have is NGOs, um, it's quite clear. United Nations, UNICEF, Oxfam. Um, I have a little booklet here. <coughs> Oxfam is actually a, a very interesting organization that they have, they have it in all the third world countries. It's mainly more on crafts. So um, VW owes it's like what we have in Singapore, the NKFs, the Renshu, and uh, NCSS. Uh, National Councils for Social Service. Uh, these are organizations that has tons and tons of money. All right, be it an organization uh, as in welfare or religious. So um, of course, uh, in that sense, there are many ways to go about using the money. But um, nevertheless, there are tons. If you Google, there are so many out there. Yeah, and um, um, in fact, this is a very, how should I say, that MECA, like for example, our National Council uh, of Social Service, has actually thrown in a lot of awareness in this area, which is very good. All right, so you may want to check it out a little bit more on your own accord. The next one. Okay, social enterprise. Um, Analajmi. Well, it is actually a vegetarian restaurant. It has been around for a long time. All the people there are volunteers. They don't, they don't get a salary. Those who can cook, they cook. Those who can actually work, uh, uh, you know, serve the tables, they, they do that. And whatever you eat there, you just pay whatever <coughs> amount you think you feel like. You know, so it's all your own free will. They, they serve buffets, they sometimes go a la carte. Yeah. And they have survived for a long time. So, well, again, having said that, uh, there are two ways to look at it. Either because the food is so good, people do come back again and again, or people are very generous and they actually pay more than they are supposed to. So it's like a donation to this restaurant. But whatever is it, um, they survive for so long. I believe they are good. Okay, Days. Days is actually like an animation, uh, a digital uh, drawings, uh, uh, they do websites. They work very closely with SPD. SPD is Singapore Physical, uh, uh, eh, Singapore Physical Dis Disabled. Okay, MICE. MICE has many different departments here. Um, they can do crafts too, uh, like mosaics. Um, Saori is one very popular one. The Japanese has actually uh, uh, donated quite a few, you know, the kind of machine sari machine and they use the fabric to make into like tissue holders and stuff like that. Point, High Point is actually a, a halfway house. It's for ex-offenders. Alright? And then you have um, also social enterprise in NUS, ITE, NEON and SMU. Cottage industry is very similar. It is, it's just uh, any social enterprise can, can be fall under the category of a cottage industry. It is a very home base unlike the factories. So it's somewhat, put it bluntly, 
you are working with the ASOs, you know, they are all your individual homes, right? That's one area to look at the cottage industries. The other is actually the disabled. There are also a lot of disabled around, um, and they are, they are not able to go to like a school, a daycare in the day. But they are very good with their hands, all right? But you have to reach them individually in their own home. These are some of the cottage industry that we are talking about. Um, they, are, they are able to produce yeah, unique stuff, um, be it a painting or a handicraft. Of course, not mass. Yeah, for the, the, let's say for the example, the mothers, if they have children or they are nannies, it's not possible for them to go to the factories. They have to work from home, work with the children, and then, you know, um, and then do the crafts at the same time. I don't know, maybe not your era, those days, a lot of people bring back little things like doing plastic bags at home. You know, when we drink all this kopi uh, 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 plastic <laughs> packaging, yeah? And then you have this purple string or the, the red, the pink ones. A lot of uh, mothers actually do it at home. These are little basic incomes. You'd be surprised these are all small things that can, you know, buy maybe an extra something for the family. But right now, if you, if you notice, none of this, nobody does this anymore. Why? They're all imported from China. Things are a lot cheaper in that sense with the mass production. But I think uh, this is what is lacking. Yeah, we have, to, we have to look into it and actually we can do quite a lot of things with these homemakers and actually benefit everybody. Right. On the flip side of, of working with the cottage industry, don't expect things that, oh, you want like 300 pieces uh, to be done within a week. You have you, you just have to regulate certain things and the workmanship will not be exactly the same uh, like what factory would produce all right mm. okay for example what i have here this is a lamp all right um, could anybody tell me what is this material made of plastic oh that's interesting okay it's actually a water bottle a recycled water bottle all right, and um, it's made by the handicapped. But this group of handicapped, are, they are also mentally challenged. All right, it's actually called the COH, Christian Outreach Handicap, um, to create recycled bottles. Uh, Greenpeace was there selling all the recycled stuff. All right, this guy who created this, his name is Kaur. He is a creative director of an advertising agency and he works with the church and the church is actually the sponsor for uh, under C C O H and he decided to create lamps with them using recycled water bottles <coughs> and he's not just interested in the product he's more interested to produce uh, to, to create uh, experience <coughs> as in workshop with the mentally disabled all right men mentally challenged in what way like workshop because it's very touching and it's very, um, um, eye, it's an eye opener that how, how mentally disabled a person is, but they are able to come up with some very interesting products. Okay, so we have um, the a social enterprise, the cottage industries. Next one. Mm. And I think over here we are all more design based. Uh, uh, with all the six, um, Johnny was just telling me all the six different design based uh, uh, departments. Correct me if I'm wrong, if for this, uh, this is just a proposal, maybe we should work on taking it as an option to look into uh, a cottage industry or social enterprise for design based uh, uh, business. In this case, COH is actually one option, that is what you have seen earlier. Then SPD, which I have briefly mentioned, which is the physically uh, uh, Singapore physically disabled uh, enterprise, right? They do book bindings and website design. And then mother and child, which is actually fashion. Yeah. Um, anybody else over here know or heard of any social enterprise that you you have this desire to to contribute your talent with uh, or you know to work with? Well, actually, I myself do have an individual project. Um, oh. Yeah, but it's actually based um, in Laos. So we are currently raising funds um, to construct a classroom in a village in Laos. 
That's wonderful.